Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Approximately 400 meters south of the Great Sphinx, there is an ancient urban site that has been excavated since 1998 that is helping us to understand the history and development of the Giza necropolis. It is just south of the enigmatic Wall of the Crow, which is 200 meters or 656 feet long, 10 meters or 33 feet high, and approximately 10 meters thick at its base. Before we get to the Lost City, it is worth spending some time on the wall, which experts believe is 4th dynasty in age, although many alternative researchers disagree, believing it could be older. Furthermore, as well as debating its age, many of us have also debated its purpose. So, why was the wall built? Some say it was never completed because there is no evidence it was cased or dressed. There was no fine finish. But some say that this was because it didn't require one. Because it was functional and not ceremonial. Some think it was a causeway. Some say it's the southern boundary wall of the Giza necropolis, whilst others just believe it's a truly ancient mystery from the pre-dynastic age. The ancient Egyptian research associates, also known as AERA, call the Wall of the Crow the Great Gateway, because of the huge opening inside it. Up close you could say it is more like a short tunnel than a large gateway. But this was certainly used as some kind of gateway, because the road that runs beneath it was paved with worn ceramic fragments and laid out on a subtle camber. Along the length of the southern side of the wall, to the east of the gateway, there was a ramp-like slope on the surface of an embankment of limestone chips, mason's debris, or waste from the wall's construction. This ramp could have been used to drag the massive lintel blocks in place that we see on the top of the gateway. Going through this gateway, and you reached a broad terrace of compacted debris, which extends at least 30 metres north of the gate. At this point you reach the canal basin that led to the Menkore Valley Temple and the Kenkawas town. The Lost City is located south of the wall, a wall that clearly separated the city from the famous necropolis to the north, with its three huge pyramids and sphinx. This has led many to believe that the Wall of the Crow is the main southern boundary of the necropolis, which does make sense, with the gateway being the main southern entrance. The eastern end of the Wall of the Crow stops abruptly, truncated by the first of four sets of galleries. These sets together are known as the Gallery Complex, which were arguably the main feature of the Lost City. The complex occupies 12,375 square meters or 40,600 square feet and is securely dated to the 4th dynasty due to the huge quantities of archaeological finds, inscriptions and hieroglyphs. The gallery complex is believed to have once housed between 1,500 and 2,000 men. Each gallery set contains several long galleries, set out in a somewhat uniform way, all of which included domestic spaces and sleeping platforms, as well as cooking and baking areas. The gallery sets were oriented east to west and were around 170 to 180 feet in length, whilst the individual galleries were oriented north to south. Experts believe that these were the barracks for the labourers who maybe built the pyramids and mastabas of the 4th dynasty, or that they were barracks for the king's royal guards, his army. In gallery set 2 marks here, there is a structure known as the manor, a large house occupying the width of three galleries, maybe for somebody of high rank. Directly to the southeast of the galleries was a royal administrative building, which, as well as being the key administration building of the city, may have also been a royal residence, maybe for the king on royal visits, or maybe for the vizier. This structure was also used as the city's central storage for the dozens of bakeries of the gallery complex, with large dome silos for grain. The ancient Egyptians used clay sealers for bags, boxes, jars and doors, many of which were found by archaeologists in the ruins of the building, and some contain the royal names of Khafre and Menkore. The site of the royal administrative building boasts the largest collection of inscribed material anywhere on the excavation site. 
Most of this building now lies beneath the Abu Hol Football Club, and so a lot of important finds are likely still below ground to this day. To the southwest of the galleries was the Western Town, an area of large housing for the elite, whilst another town to the east comprised smaller and simpler mud brick houses, which may have been for permanent workers and their families, or maybe for those of higher ranks like foremen. Archaeologists have spent more than 20 years excavating the city, and they are in no doubt that this was an important 4th dynasty royal complex. It was more than just a city for construction workers or the royal army, because it also contained a major copper working facility, a faience working facility, major granite workshops where tons of granite dust were discovered, large storerooms, and silos for food and grain. It was a vast urban centre, and the only explanation that seems to make sense is that this was a city for the labourers of the Giza Plateau, which of course was a vast building project. The galleries are clearly set out for workers of some kind. Huge amounts of food were clearly required, and evidence shows they were watched by royal officials, or even by royal family members themselves. The city was positioned right next to the Giza necropolis only during the 4th dynasty, a time when the plateau was being transformed into a major royal cemetery. Therefore, logic says that the two must be linked. Thousands of workers living next to the plateau would surely have had one purpose, to build. It is believed it was the main royal centre of administration, home to thousands of people who lived in a very regimented fashion, and they must be the ones who built the necropolis. At the end of the 4th dynasty, the settlement, including the huge gallery complex, was abandoned. And this is because under the new pharaoh Shepseskaf, royal administration, including the royal necropolis, was moved to Saqqara. In my opinion, one of the most important things we learn from all of this is that the Wall of the Crow is a 4th dynasty construction, because its foundations stop when it reaches gallery set 1. When excavating the eastern end of the wall, its relationship to the first gallery set displayed a clear and obvious chronology of events. This is explained in full in the Fall 2002 newsletter from the AERA. The end of the Wall of the Crow was purposefully flat, lining up with the west wall of the entire gallery system, as shown here. Evidence shows that the wall was built with the galleries, and certainly after Gallery Set 1, as its end was designed to butt up against the plastered mud brick wall of the gallery. Archaeologists found that the Wall of the Crow presses hard against the western plastered wall, indicating that the wall was built after the exterior of the gallery wall was plastered. Furthermore, the north side of the Wall of the Crow is on a line with the outer corner of the gallery in its north wall. The wall must have been built for a specific purpose, whilst the gallery complex was already in operation. So, with all this information, the wall clearly wasn't a causeway that reached out to the Nile, because we would find evidence at depth. The wall stopped, or started, abruptly at the 4th dynasty gallery set 1, which we can see was built first. To me, what seems clear is that the Wall of the Crow divided the necropolis from the city, but the wall isn't particularly long, so this can't be its primary purpose. Looking at this diagram and all becomes clear. You can see its relationship to the Khafre Basin, and the canal that extended up to the Menkore Valley Temple in the Kenkawas town. Seeing the Wall of the Crow on such a diagram really helps us to understand its true purpose. It was clearly for flood defence. As stated in previous videos, persistent heavy rain and flash floods were commonplace in the Old Kingdom, which could cause the waters in the canal system, including the Khafre Basin, to rise rapidly and burst their banks. Experts also noted that the city was built on the outwash of a wadi, a stream bed that occasionally carried heavy floods running off the plateau. Basically, with an increase in precipitation, the city was at major risk of flooding, unless of course a large flood defence was created. With its huge blocks of limestone, the Wall of the Crow would have been able to deflect the bulk of floodwaters from the north and northwest away from the city. Archaeologists have also noted that the northern mud brick wall of Gallery Set 1 was particularly thick, so was likely sufficient enough to add protection from floods. B 
being a flood barrier to protect the city probably explains why it doesn't extend all the way across the plateau, stopping close to the rocky outcrop known as Gebel Ghibli. Maybe the gateway was added to the wall to allow some water to pass through, water that was maybe channelled into the lagoon that was located south of the city. Maybe this water had a purpose, maybe sanitation, I don't know. It is worth noting that excavations of the lost city have been important not just for Egyptology, but also for anthropology and the history of architecture, cities and technology. This settlement south of the Wall of the Crow boasts Egypt's oldest workers' city, oldest paved streets, oldest bakeries, oldest copper working facility and the oldest faience facility and so on. On the Ancient Egyptian Research Associates website there is so much more information as well as an interactive map of the city and if you download their 2002 newsletter you can read all about this incredible city from the 4th dynasty. This city truly was a lost city, an important settlement that seems to have been inhabited until the very end of the 4th dynasty. It is a major part of the Giza story because it documents the region's social history, the part of the story so often overlooked, but it's thanks to the excavations that we continue to piece together the lost history of Giza. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects, if you enjoyed the video please subscribe to the channel, please like the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.